So for this first project, you're gonna need some scrapbook paper and a wooden pumpkin. Um, I got this wooden pumpkin from the Dollar Tree and I got the scrapbook paper from a paper pack that you could buy at Hobby Lobby. It's out of, out of their holiday um, paper pack. So I'll put the link to that in the description box below. So once I have all the tags removed from the pumpkin and everything, I'm just gonna take some of this um, school glue that you can get from the Dollar Tree I'm going to cover the entire pumpkin with school glue and I'm going to use this orange and black pattern that you see in the right hand part of your screen. I'm going to cover the entire pumpkin with that and trim off any excess. Once the main paper is glued onto the pumpkin and all the excess is trimmed off, now I'm going to take these other two sheets of scrapbook paper and I'm just going to cut them and rip them. I'm using these special scissors that have like the different designs and stuff in them. There's no rhyme or reason on how I'm cutting these papers. I just want them to look like they're ripped and torn and kind of old. And when I did pick out the papers out of the paper pack, I wanted to make sure that they all had like coordinating colors. So they all kind of matched the main paper that I'm using on the pumpkin, which is the orange and black. So you can see here, it's all the same colors. And again, I'm just ripping it and tearing it off enough to be able to fit the um, left side of the pumpkin and the right side of the pumpkin because I'm leaving the center open. So once I have these cut down to size, I'm just going to glue them onto the pumpkin. And I'm just going to let you watch the process because it's better for you to watch than it is for me to explain. <laughs> now once I have the papers cut and um, down to the size that I want them and ripped up the way I like them, I'm just going to take some school glue and I'm just going to glue them down to both sides of the pumpkin. And once I have those glued on, then we're going to cut off all the excess paper and trim around the pumpkin. Once I have the scrapbook paper glued on and trimmed down to the way I like it, I'm just going to take some sandpaper and we're just going to rough this pumpkin up. And that way it kind of hides the seams of the scrapbook paper and it makes it just look like it's one piece. When I'm done sanding down the pumpkin, I'm just going to take me a wet wipe and we're going to wipe off all that dust. And when I did this, I accidentally tore the scrapbook paper, but that's okay. I think it just adds a little more character to this pumpkin. Now I'm taking some of this like leather shoestring stuff that I've had. This I've had this in my stash forever. I actually think it was given to me, so I don't know or where it came from. You could use jute twine, jute cord, you could use anything you want. I just thought this kind of looked more rustic and it was really thick. So this is what I'm going to wrap the stem up in. And um, I really like this actually. I like the way it felt and everything because it's kind of got like this velvety, velvety feel. But anyways, like I said, you can use whatever you have on hand. This is just what I could find and I thought looked cool on my pumpkin. So now I'm just going to take some ribbon and I'm just going to make me a messy bow. I'm going to use this orange, black, and this spiderweb Halloween ribbon that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of making me like a scrap bow. I don't know what you actually call them. Anyways, I just cut me up different sizes of the ribbon and then I put them all together to make a sloppy bow. You guys can see how my bow turned out. Um, Shadow seeing if it's up to her standards, which apparently it is. Like I said, I didn't shoot the, the video of me making the entire bow because, guys, I am nowhere near um, a bow expert. Like, I just slopped this together, made it look neat, and glued it onto my pumpkin. Now, once I have the bow glued on, I'm going to take two of these tower tumbling blocks, and I'm going to glue them on the back of the pumpkin so that it stands up. I 
project, you're going to need one of these wooden square boxes that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And we're going to use the entire box. And you're also going to need two wooden cubes or squares. Um, I purchased these off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description box below. And you're also going to want to print out on your Cricut, Happy Haunting. You can use any kind of vinyl you want because we're just going to use it as a stencil and we're just going to peel it off. So um, if you don't have a Cricut, you can also use some stickers from the Dollar Tree. Or if you're really good at freehanding it, you can freehand it. But I'm not good at freehanding. So what I did is I just transferred the Happy Haunting onto my box. I just wanted to point it out that um, I'm also doing this with the box upside down, which will make sense once the project's complete. You'll understand why I did it this way. If I try to explain it now, it's just going to be really confusing. So we'll get into that later. But I am going to transfer the happy haunting onto the box upside down. Once I have the transfer on my box, I'm going to take this pavement color, which is kind of like a, a really dark gray. And I'm going to paint the entire box, including the lid, in this gray pavement color. Now once we have the box painted in the pavement color, you're also going to want to paint your two cubes in the same color. Once our paint is dry, we're going to start peeling off the Happy Haunting sticker or vinyl that we put on there. And it's just going to leave the natural wood once we have that peeled off. Once we have our letters peeled off, I'm just going to take some sandpaper and I'm just going to sand some of the paint off around the edges. And we're just going to rough this up really good. Um, I want it to look like a rustic Halloween piece. So we're going to sand this part, the lid, and the blocks. So once everything's sanded down, this is what we should have. And now I'm going to take some scrapbook paper. Again, this piece of paper came out of that holiday pack that we used in the first DIY that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to just trace it out onto the scrapbook paper and I'm going to cut out enough to cover the bottom and the top of this box. I guess I should say the bottom and the lid of the box. As you can see here, once I had that traced onto the paper, I'm going to cut the paper a little shorter than what the box is because I want some of the box showing. I don't want the paper to completely cover the box. So I'm just going to cut it a little shorter and then we're going to glue it on, just using regular school glue. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on our cubes and you're going to need different types of scrapbook paper, which I guess you don't need it, but I ended up using several different types. And what I did is I made me a pattern by tracing out my cube onto a piece of scrapbook paper and I cut that scrapbook paper shorter and I ended up cutting out 12 pieces of scrapbook paper because each cube has six faces. Once we have our cubes completely sanded down, I'm going to take these rub-on transfers that you can purchase from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to get the sequence of numbers out for each cube. So the first cube, you're only going to need the numbers one through six. And these are all different types of numbers. I really like these rub-on transfers. So it's not going to be the same design. I'm going to use a different height and design of number on each side of the cube. So for this second cube, we're going to use some more of the Dollar Tree rub-on transfers. And the numbers we're going to use for this cube will be 0, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. And I'll put these sequence of numbers up in the screen on each cube that you'll need those for. And what this will do is it will just give us the right amount of numbers we need for our Halloween countdown. Yes, we are making a Halloween countdown uh, cube set. 
that you're also going to be able to put in the box and store away. So stay tuned and see what else we do with this. Okay, once we have both cubes done, now we're going to finish working on our block box. And I noticed that this thing on the number transfer sheet kind of looks like a bat. So I just went ahead and cut it out and I'm just going to add a little bat there above where it says happy haunting on the box. You can skip this. I don't know. I just thought it looked like a bat. I don't actually know like what kind of symbol it's supposed to be. Is it like a parentheses or I don't know what it is. But anyway, it looks like a bat to me. So it's a bat. Okay, now it's time to show you how I intend to use this DIY. I needed something that was going to store my cubes for my Halloween countdown calendar for when I'm not using it so that I don't lose the cubes. So that's why I've chosen this box. And the reason why I put Happy Haunting upside down is because you're not going to really see it anyway when it's stored. But when it's not being stored and it's being used, I like to use the top as the base of this. And then I turn the bottom upside down just like that. And then I can set my cubes on top of it. And it makes for a perfect base. And it's so much fun. You get to change the numbers as it gets closer to Halloween. So I've decided that my storage box needs a little something more. So I wanted to add a cute little ribbon. But when doing this, I noticed that um, the lid was wanting to push the ribbon off and it wouldn't stay glued down. So what I did is I made me a cute little ribbon out of this buffalo check ribbon that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And then I used some fastener dots and I attached the fastener dots to my storage block. That way, when I go to put the lid on and store my cubes, I can take the ribbon off and store it in the box with the cubes. Tell me if that wasn't a genius idea. Anyway, check it out. So by using these fastener dots to put the bow on, when I'm ready to store my cubes, I just take the bow off, stick it in the box with the cubes, and everything's ready for storage, and I won't lose any of this. Now what I did notice is that the lid was wanting to come off, so I just took some more of that buffalo check ribbon and I measured out enough to wrap around the box and to tie it in a knot, and that way I can just slide this off and on when I'm ready to get use my cubes for the season. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think or what you would do different with this project, and give me a big thumbs up because that really does help my channel grow. So for this next project, you're just going to need one of these wooden pumpkins that come with a stand. Again, this is stuff you can get from the Dollar Tree every fall on Halloween. And you're also going to need a glue gun. And what I'm going to start out by doing is I'm going to use my glue gun to make some lines on the pumpkin. To make some raised ridges so that when we paint over this, it'll give it some detail. So once our hot glue lines are dry, we're going to take some Waverly chalk paint and ink and we're going to give this two coats. So once our black paint is dry, I'm going to take some of this Harvest Orange and we're just going to dry brush over the pumpkin. Once we're done dry brushing, this is what it should look like. And as you can see, it really brought out that um, hot glue and those lines. 
So now I'm taking this piece of scrap wood that I got out of one of those wood kits that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to paint this in antique white. And once that paint is dry, I'm just going to take some Waverly antique wax. And we're just going to um, put some wax there on the edges and on the ends. Just to kind of make it look a little more distressed. When we are done antiquing and it's all nice and dry, I'm just going to take a Sharpie marker and I'm just going to handwrite this. My handwriting sucks, but I really didn't want to use a Cricut. You could use stickers or whatever, but I wrote Frightful on this. I also just wanted to point out that I do know I used capital letters in the middle of this. And I did that on purpose because I just wanted to kind of give it, I don't know, a little more dimension. How many times can I use the word dimension in this one? But as you can see, that's just basically what I did is just wrote it out in awful handwriting. Oh my God, it's embarrassing. My now I'm going to so go into these journaling cards that you can get from the Dollar Tree because I felt like this needed a little something on the frightful on the left side of the F. So I ended up picking out a spider and it's this little tiny black spider right there. It's so cute. Anyways, I ended up cutting it out and I had to paint over it with my antique white for it to kind of blend into the piece that I was putting it on. And this was very tedious. So I just cut it out with some detailing scissors and glued it on with some school glue and then painted over it and drew back on the legs with a black marker so that it all looked like it was one piece. You can see here what it looked like after I painted it with the antique white and drew back on the legs. Now let me tell you something, guys. <laughs> if you have a Cricut or a sticker or anything else, it would be so much easier to do than using these little cutouts. And the reason why I painted over it is because it was printed on white paper and it doesn't really match my antique white that I have the Frightful painted on. So I painted over it and blended it all in with some... Mod Podge onto the Frightful sign and it turned out wonderful. Once I have that glued on, I'm going to take this Xfinity scarf that I bought from the Dollar Tree and we're just going to cut it down to fit the pumpkin and we're going to glue it on to the back. And when you're doing this, you want to make sure that the material is tight when you glue it down because you don't want any wrinkles because they'll show through the eyes and the mouth. Once I have the material glued onto the back of the pumpkin, I'm just going to take my scissors and cut off any excess material. One important thing to remember when you're gluing down the material, you want to make sure that it's nice and tight. You don't want it very loose because it's just uh, going to look sloppy if it's not. And you can see here what it should look like once we have all the material trimmed down and glued on. Now what I want to do is I want to make a bow for this. So I've got some ribbon here that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to uh, make a cute little shoe tie bow with it. Once the bow is made, we're just going to use some hot glue to glue it onto the stem. And then once I have that glued onto the stem, I'm going to take an orange and black piece of string and also make a shoe string bow out of it. And I'm going to glue that down on top of this ribbon. And then when I have that glued down, I'm also going to take an orange button out of my stash and glue that down on top of that. this next project you're going to need two of these mini palettes that you can get from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to tear off all the tags and everything 
And once I have that done, I'm going to give both of these palettes two coats of Waverly chalk paint and pumpkin. Now when I'm painting these, I'm also avoiding the raised part because this, I know this is supposed to be the back side of the palette, but this is going to be the front side for me. And we're going to paint that raised part black. So there's really no need to paint it with the orange unless you want to, because the black will go over the orange, but I mean, it's just pretty much pointless to do that. So I'm going to avoid that area, but I am going to paint both sides, making sure I get into those little crevices and all that good stuff. Make it look pretty. Once both of our mini palettes are dry, I'm just going to take some masking tape. You don't have to do this if you're really good at painting and staying in the lines, but I'm not that great. So I just masked off this part because like I said, these two raised edges, I'm going to paint in Waverly chalk paint and ink, and I don't want to get it. I don't want to get any of that ink paint on my pumpkin paint. Now I'm going to take these die cut numbers I bought from the Dollar Tree. They're actually in the teacher section. And I took two threes and two ones out of this pack. Now they are yellow and I don't want them yellow. So what I end up doing is I give them two coats of Waverly ink. And it doesn't affect it or anything. I mean, it doesn't. It didn't weaken the paper. These are actually die cuts. So it's kind of like a thicker construction paper, I guess. Maybe not as thick as construction paper. But anyways, they held the paint pretty well. So yeah, I just gave them two coats of Waverly chalk paint. Once our die cut numbers are dry, I'm going to take some double-sided sticky tape that I bought from the Dollar Tree. And this is real thick. Like, I don't know. It's really super thick. But you're going to double these up so i'm gonna tape one down to the number and then i'm gonna tape another one down on top of that and the reason why i'm doubling these up is because i want these to set up high enough off the palette so that they're coming over the two black lines that's on the palette does that make sense hope that makes sense by doubling them up it raises them higher i hope that made more sense <laughs> i'll stop i'll stop while i'm ahead Once I have those pieces of foam tape on there, I realize that you're going to be able to see the white from the foam. So I just took a little bit of the black ink and I painted these. And you're going to do the same thing on both threes and both ones. And once all that paint's dry, we're just going to start taping them down to our mini palette. Now that you can see, it's actually raised up from those two black pieces of wood that connect the palette. After looking at these for a minute, I decided that I needed to add a little something to the numbers to make them pop just a little more from the palette. So I ended up taking some of that Harvest Orange paint from Waverly, or no, it was the pumpkin paint from Waverly. And I ended up taking that and I just made little polka dots all around the three and the one on both pieces. There, I think that looks so much better. Now once the paint has dried, I'm going to put both of these pieces together. And I'm going to take my Dremel tool, or you could use a drill if you have one. And I'm just going to drill me two holes. And the reason why I put the pals together is because you want to make sure those holes match up perfectly or you're going to end up with a crooked sign. It was kind of hard to do with a Dremel. I couldn't find my drill. I have no idea where it's at. So yeah, I just kind of had to maneuver my drivel around, my Dremel around to get the holes that I needed. But if you have a drill, it's much easier to do. Now once we have our holes drilled, we're going to take some jute twine, some ribbon, some thread, some string, whatever you have. I'm using this orange and black string that I have, and I'm going to run it through those holes that we just drilled. And I found it easier to tape the end of this with some masking tape, and it fit right through those holes perfectly. And once we have that through those holes, we're going to tie the string into pretty little bows. Now, when tying these together, you want to make sure you give yourself enough um, rope or string or jute twine, whatever you're using, to be able to tie it tight and to be able to tie it into a pretty bow. You want these to be tied 
tight enough so that this stays open, but yet loose enough so that you can close it. Because this is going to be a cute little mini palette table sign. for you for this video i just want to say thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and don't forget to hit that notification bell and i'll see you in the next video